you very much, Mike, and thank you very much to everyone. Just before I begin, can I just check, can you all hear me if I speak without a microphone? Yes? Uh, I suppose if you can't hear me, uh, they can't hear me, so I need to use the microphone? Yes. Uh, that's a pity, okay. What if I put the, mo the equipment here? Do you, do you pick it up if I do it there? Yeah, okay, right, I'll do that, because I don't think it's easier to speak in front of you rather than behind something. So, beginning with a quick apology. My quick apology is that I'm going to have to leave at 20 past 8. And the reason I'm going to leave at 20 past 8 is that though I love official statistics and uh, I devote most of my evenings, I give up most of my evenings to official statistics, actually today I haven't voted yet. And I love official statistics just so far but no further than giving up my franchise. So I will leave just before the end so I can go home and vote. Somebody said to me earlier, uh, if the result of tonight's election uh, referendum is a, is a result by one by one vote, you were, you were here. You were, I was that one. Uh, which, which, which is um, so thank you very much, Mike. I am Ed Humpherson, and I'm the Director General for Regulation at the UK Statistics Authority. And what that means is I'm responsible for taking forward the Act, the Statistics Act that Mike uh, outlined, and um, regulating the uh, production of official statistics by the Office for National Statistics, and also by every other government department in every part of the UK, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and all of the uh, arm's length bodies, and so on. So a very broad remit. And what I'd like to do uh, is to pick up where Mike left off and talk about uh, the fault lines that I perceive in uh, the role of being a regulator of public numbers, a regulator of, of, of official statistics. And I'm gonna do that um, not because I think our system of oversight of official numbers is broken. On the contrary, I think it serves the UK really well. I think I've got the best job in the civil service, really. Uh, it's that I think that in any role where you're responsible for a system, you have to be open to the fault lines and you have to be willing to uh, admit that there are uh, issues and challenges, to never be complacent. So it's in that spirit that I'm going to talk about two types of fault line, those which are endogenous and those which are exogenous. By endogenous, I mean things which are properties of the system, as Mike described it. And by exogenous, I mean things which are about the broader uh, society in which we live in. So let me start with uh, the most obvious endogenous challenge for me. I am uh, effectively the chief, reg chief executive of the regulator, uh, the authority I'm a part of also produces a ton of statistics. So I am part of an organisation which is both producer and regulator. And that is kind of quite self-evidently a challenge. Uh, and uh, I think one should distinguish between it being a challenge in operational reality and a challenge in legitimacy. In operational reality... Can you, did you hear that? <laughs> um, in operational reality, do I come under pressure to uh, be less critical of the ONS? No, never. It's never happened. And in fact, if you looked at the track record, you'd see that my decisions, my judgments were, if anything, harsher uh, about uh, the ONS than about any other part of government. Um, those of you who are on the inside would know there's quite a lot to be harsh about, uh, so maybe that, that explains it. But there's also a question of legitimacy. And I think that to have a structure where I'm part of an authority, but also carrying out an independent function, uh, is quite a struggle. It's confusing, the responsibilities can be blurred, and that's not just cosmetic. I think if the system depends on being able to demonstrate a real transparency of scrutiny, that the scrutineer role to be murky, to be unclear, I think is a challenge. And in fact, later on this year, I'm going to be making proposals to make the role that I carry out more, more transparent and independent. The second um, exogenous, uh, uh, endogenous, second internal factor that uh, I face as a challenge is to do with the way that we do the work. So there are um, around a thousand national statistics produced in the UK. Uh, my my organisation has assessed them all and determined whether they merit this designation as national statistics. The core problem in 2008 was that lots of those national statistics weren't produced in a very trustworthy way. 
it was hard for the organisations producing them to demonstrate they were free from vested interests, that they were free from political influence. There were problems with ministers having access, free release access we call it. Uh, there were problems of disorderly announcement, the commentary wasn't always frank. So my uh, predecessor and me uh, did this enormous task of kind of going through that whole stock and setting some basic standards of trustworthy dissemination of official statistics. Great work, really in the public interest. The trouble with it is, is it did tend to be the same in lots of different cases because the same issues came, came uh, around again and again. And if you were to pick any of those first 240 reports we produced, they would have a template feel, and it's not far to go from something which is standard to something which is a template, into something which is a checklist, into something which is just a factory kind of hamster wheel. So that's the second challenge, is demonstrating clearly that we think about more than just basic processes of dissemination. We think about quality and value. So those are my two endogenous uh, uh, challenges. There are also two exogenous challenges, or at least two exogenous challenges. The two main ones are, firstly, we're here today to talk about official statistics. The Act talks about official statistics. The Code of Practice talks about official statistics. It is entirely unclear to me that there is a thing in the world called official statistics which are different from all the many multiple other ways in which government disseminates information. Open data, management information, uh, there's a thing called quarterly data summaries which come out, uh, there's research reports, there's economic forecasts. And it seems to me that we have a challenge in articulating why official statistics should be treated separately, but an even bigger challenge to treat the public with respect. Uh, I think the public know when they're being presented with aggregate numeric information by the government. They don't really define a difference between official and other kinds of information. And we think there should be basic standards which apply to all information disseminated by government, regardless of how it's kind of pre-categorised by the government department. Communicating that, those basic standards of disseminating information to the public, treating the public with respect, that's uh, a big challenge for us. Final challenge that I'm going to talk about is the nature of public discourse. Um, it's, it's wonderful to live in a country where people care so much about official statistics that they'll turn out uh, on a rainy Thursday night to listen to a tedious presentation something from me. Uh, I'm told that people in this country love official statistics so much that they'll actually hire a bus, pick an official statistic, uh, paint it on the side of the bus and drive it around the country. That's the respect with which official statistics are true for this country. And those of you based in the UK uh, will know to what I'm referring. Um, I think we live in a public discourse which is very fact-rich, uh, in which there are wars around the uses of facts, interpretation of facts, and I think there is also a public fatigue about facts as well. For someone whose job is the regulation of public numbers, that nature discourse and that uh, public fatigue is a very major challenge, a very major challenge, um, and one that we, we might require us to be even more assertive than we currently are in speaking out about the use of official statistics in the future. So that's a very quick whistle stop tour of four challenges of doing my role. I just want to come back to one thing I said in passing, a little glib phrase. I said I've got the best job in the civil service. I really mean it. Statistics, when they're produced well, present this extraordinary, rich and insightful way of understanding the world, of helping the public uh, in many guises is to make sense of the world around us. And it's a huge privilege to be responsible for making sure that is done with respect, both for the statistics and for the public. And I suppose what I would uh, love to feel is that it's my job to steward a system of regulation so that it endures long beyond my tenure in, in line with the historical perspective that I've given. And I hope I can live up to that. Thank you very much. <laughs>